Lord. I heard that West praise the Lord. I heard that East praise the Lord. Omok, praise the Lord. Ty, praise the Lord. Everybody praise the Lord. Single brothers, ages 10 to 21. Praise the Lord. Special program is coming for you. Now the one we had for the female, yours is taking place on June 12th. Special single. Special single. Okay, special single. Both brothers and sisters. Those who are not married yet. Then for brothers ages 10 to age 21. We we'll give you the date. It's coming. And all our married men, special program is coming for you. Men's fellowship, men's fellowship, we pursue you, overtake you, baptize you, you start teaching your wife holiness. Amen. Amen. Let's pray together. Father, we thank you for this very hour. We ask, oh Lord, you minister to us, Lord. That the entrance of your word will give us life. We give us love. Give us light. In Jesus' name, we pray. Amen. We are looking at following Christ wholeheartedly. You can follow Satan half-heartedly, half-hazardly. For God, he said, my son, give me your heart. We are to follow God wholeheartedly. In Numbers chapter 14, we are presented with a Bible character, a model. The Lord testified of Caleb that he followed him fully. Fully. Not partially. In Numbers chapter 12, in verse 24, but my servant Caleb, because he had another spirit. The spirit of God. Not the spirit of disobedience. Not the spirit of rebellion. Not the spirit of self-will. With him, he has followed me. How? How? Fully. He will I bring into the land where on toe he went and his seed shall possess it. Praise the Lord. In chapter 13, we see that we are sent on a mission. As we also, we are sent on a mission. The GS will visit this state very soon at Isiokbo to hold a global crusade with Kumui. And Yesterday, myself and all the region of Asia and some of the group coordinators, we are there to Joshua the place. It took us more than one hour to go through it. We went around it one hour at a stretch without stopping. And thank God, nobody was tired 
Nobody waited and said, let me rest because we are wholly following the Lord. Here we see in verse 26 to verse 30, the scripture says, and it says, and they went and came to Moses and to Aaron and to all the congregation of children of Israel into the wilderness of Paran to Kadesh and brought back words unto them and unto all the congregation and showed them the fruit of the land. Yesterday, our group coordinator, our region of Asia, they have gone to see the land and they have come back to show you and they'll be talking to you more about it. The work that has been done so far and the enormity of the work that is still remaining this book came to give report as they will give to you in verse 28 nevertheless the people be strong that dwell in, in the land and the cities are war and very great and moreover we saw the children of Anang there the Amalekites dwell in the land of the south and the Hittites and the Jebusites and the Amorites dwell in the mountains and the Canaanites dwell by the sea and by the coast of Jordan and Caleb steal the people before Moses and said let us go up at once and possess it for we are well able to overcome it praise the Lord so those who don't have faith who are walking by sight because as we saw the land yesterday it's manchi and we have spent millions already bulldozing clearing the place and we still need plenty of millions if we still take nothing less than 50 million to 100 million to clear it that is not starting the work yet that is not building hostels that we take about 50,000 people yet and those who have faith who have wholly followed the Lord like Caleb they tell you the Lord has given us the land we are well able I say we are well able Ispai represented a tribe in Israel when they came back, ten of them gave an evil report that discouraged the Israelites from moving on. You will not be among those who will give evil report. And you will not be among those who will open your ears to hear evil report. If your leader is given to fear, to discouragement, is given to mischief, is given to unbelief I will not follow such a leader I say I will not follow such a leader and such leaders they were seeing giants but Caleb and Joshua were confident about possessing the land and overcoming the giants that occupy it because they were certain the Lord was on their side. Yesterday when I came back, as I was praying, God impressed on me. Remember, my God shall supply all your needs according to his riches in glory by Christ Jesus. And by the grace of God, he will supply all your needs. Some people always bear evil. They always have discouraging and fearful report. They ever, they aver that evangelism, church planting, church growth, living a holy life, and doing the will of God are not possible. Although they acknowledge the grace of God, they always have a but. Whenever you are talking, you say, but that ball there is Satan's tool. It's a reverse. When you study the Bible, 
mark bot. Where you see bot, there's a reverse gear. The Bible talks about the spirit of disobedience, talks about those who are living in sin. He said, But God, who is rich in mercy, that's a reverse gear. What God has come to do. So from today, all bot will be removed from your life. You will not permit bot in your dictionary. It will not be there again. They have a bot attached to their faith, to their commitment and consecration. The spies that brought the evil report to Moses wanted to follow the Lord, but not wholeheartedly. They were following God haphazardly. They were following God half-heartedly. They were following God with the mind. If it happened, we go back. They have alternative routes. They have secret agenda. They have their own plan. Caleb gave us a sterling example of following the Lord with all the heart, all the soul and the mind, without any string attached. Today, the Lord is in search of believers who manifest similar courage and follow him fully. God had been referring to Moses as my servant. And because Caleb has another spirit, the heart and the spirit of a conqueror, the Lord conferred the same title to him. Our God is not in search of people who flock with the crowd bears of the same feather and those who swim against who swim but those who swim against the tide there are many things that we bring unbelief that will make you to feel this is impossible it cannot be done but it can be done are you hearing me now naturally there are things you will think is impossible Look at the history of the world. When there was no electricity, when they were using lamp, when they were using lantern, when they were using all those things, candle, somebody said, there can be electricity. He tried many, many times. He failed many, many times, but he succeeded. There was a time, it's coming, they were using animal transport. They were using here and there. Somebody said there can be a motor car. Then there after somebody said there can be a ship moving on top of the water. Later somebody said there can be a submarine ship moving under the water. Bigger than upstairs. Up to about 10 times this very building. Moving under water. And it came to pass. Somebody said there can be an aeroplane flying on the air. Somebody said there can be a jet that can move at a very fast speed. And all these things came to pass. And all the internet and every other things that are taking place today, people said it can be done. And if human beings can do that, God can do more than them. And by the grace of God, we will succeed. I say, you will succeed. I will succeed more. As Caleb was rewarded with entrance into and possession of the land, Christ rewards and confess a special blessing on believers who follow him wholeheartedly, daily, irrespective of the challenges they may encounter on their way to heaven. Look up here. Everybody has challenge. Somebody has physical disability. He goes to the mirror to be begging. That is his own faith. 
He does not believe that even without eye, he can do what someone who has eyes cannot do. I had a classmate in the university many years ago, more than 20 or even almost 30 years now. We were who read political science totally blind. I think I even brought him to my house. I made him my friend. And all the notes, all the currency with their various things, he can identify every one of them. He knows the one that is this, the one that is this, 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 this. He knows them. Then, if you talk to him, I introduce you and say, Muiwa, this is my friend. I mention your name. He will mention your name. And when you answer once or twice, the next day he see you, he will mention your name. The brain is super. And he came out one of the best students in political science. When we were discussing politics, he discusses it very well. He's an international student, mentally gifted. He does not want you to pity him. He believes what you can do, he can do more than you. And there are many blind people like that, many lame people like that, many deaf people like that. They don't want you to pity them. They believe what you can do, they can do it. But some just resign to faith and they start begging on the streets. They become liability and all others. We know of people who don't have hands. They use their mouth to paint, to write, and they do more than those who have hands. And many others like that. By the grace of God, we are going somewhere. And the Lord will see us through in Jesus' name. He made such people strong physically, spiritually, psychologically, and blesses them with every necessary material possession. Write down and see what I say now. Our level of followership is always proportional to our level of fruitfulness and blessing. A level of fruitfulness and blessing from God. When you follow God wholeheartedly, you will also be more fruitful than any other person. And your fellowship with God will be deeper and richer. Because God will only possess a heart totally given to him. That leads us to point to one. The personal choice of following Christ wholeheartedly. It's your choice. You are the one who will make the choice. Nobody will make it for you. And if you choose not to follow him wholeheartedly, and you have double face, one is looking to Satan. One is looking to God. Satan will push you. Satan will contest with any life that is not fully given to God. But every life totally given to God, God will protect. And Satan will not have any hold upon that very life. So make sure by the grace of God, you are wholly giving to the Lord. And the Lord will bless you immensely in Jesus' name. We see now from the word of God in point one. We see in Joshua chapter 14 in verse 7 and 8. Joshua 14 Verse 7 and 8. The scripture says in 14, verse 7 and 8. 40 years old, 
was I. When Moses, the servant of the Lord, sent me from Kadesh, Barnes, to spy out the land, and I brought him west again, as it was in my heart. Nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me made the heart of the people met, but I wholly followed the Lord my God. May that be your testimony. Why others are falling aside, you will continue. And you will be able to say, I wholly followed the Lord. May you wholly follow the Lord. Then, in roots, we see not just only that, the choice to follow Christ wholeheartedly is not a community choice. It's not a chorus choice. It's not a corporate choice. It is not a family choice. The decision for the kingdom and the work of God is personal. If you always rely on others' opinion to make up your mind, if you always rely on your husband to make vow before you make vow, if you always depend on your wife to make vow before you make vow, if you always depend on your pastor to make vow, before you make vow, you'll be limiting your fruitfulness and blessing. You will not be what God wants you to be. You have to single out, single out yourself and know the opinion to make up your mind is yours. You will then be able to say like Caleb, nevertheless, my brethren that went up with me, made up the heart of the people met, but they couldn't make his whole heart met, but I only follow the Lord. If the Lord helped Caleb to make the personal choice, he can help you as well. I say he can help you as well. This decision does not only apply to only men, it also applies to females, to others, who have given their lives to the Lord, to others who still need to give their life to the Lord, in Ruth chapter 1, in verse 16 to verse 18. Ruth chapter 1, from verse 16, we see Ruth offer has keep kiss Naomi and has gone back to her God, gone back to her land of nativity, Gone back to our gods. But Ruth made up her mind. In verse 16, we are told here, and Ruth said, Entreat me not to leave thee or to return from following after thee. For whither thou goest, I will go. And whither thou lodgest, I will lodge. Look up here. Where did Jesus go to? To where? To where? Where he went, I will go. Where he's lodging now, I will lodge. Where Peter went to, I will go. Where Abraham went to, I will go. Where they are lodging now, I will lodge. I will not go where Judah Iscariot went to. I will not go where Ahitophel went to. Then he says, I will go, and where thou lodgest, I will lodge. Thy people shall be my people. And thy God, my God, where thou diest, I will die. And there will I be buried. The Lord do so to me, and more so if aught. But death, part thee and me. And when she saw that she was steadfastly minded, to go with her. Then she let speaking unto her. Let's learn a lesson from here. You have a decision to make. And God is trying you. To know whether you mean it or not. And God is saying go back. 
like Elijah was telling Elisha, go back. Like Naoma is telling Ruth here, go back. Then you say, the Spirit of God told me to do that other thing. And you now do it and you are quoting to support yourself. God was testing you to know whether you mean what you are saying or you don't mean it. But if you mean it, you will be able to go. And the Lord will help you to go in Jesus' name. That is the reason why it is necessary you look unto Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He never looked back. That is the reason why it's necessary you look to the rock for whence you were head. Look to Abraham. He wholly followed the Lord and the Lord blessed him. In Isaiah chapter 51 in verse 1 and 2. Isaiah 51 in verse 1 and in verse 2. Hearken to me, ye that follow after righteousness. Ye that seek the Lord, look unto the rock, whence hence ye are head, and to the hole of the pit, whence hence ye are dig. Look unto Abraham, your father, and not to Sarah that bear you, for I called him alone. God does not call multitude at the same time. Even when we are making utter call to many people, we are calling you alone. It's a personal decision. I called him alone. God said and blessed him and increased him. The Lord will bless you and increase you. He will bless you and increase you. Look into any person for reassurance and inspiration. We make you slow down and discourage when they stop following the Lord. I remember when the Lord called me to go into full time and finish university at that very time. I didn't go into the university early. I spent about nine to 11 years or even more working before I went to the university. Then I came back. I was, uh, I was a senior staff in the Apex Bank and it was remaining just some months for me to be promoted to managerial level. Before then, my wife will remember, I was no more finding it easy. I was no more enjoying the work. I saw myself like this man, uh, Ufli Totashi. What's his name again? Huh? Jonah. And I thought if I die in this way, I will go to hell. But one day, the GS said, my head usher, in the church I was leading to call me and my wife. And he said, I am sending you to a state to do the work there as the overseer. Now it was not difficult. Number one, God has dealt with me. Number two, God has revealed things to me. He asked me some few questions. I answered him. I got to the office. I signed, I wrote, and I gave them the paper. My boss and so many other people, they were saying, how will you live? You will soon be promoted. You have children. You just want to go to uncertainty. It was at that time, people were moved from Lagos to Abuja when Abuja was open. And Central Bank was to go there. And what they will pay me is far more than my gratuity. And people were calculating here and there. I knew the call of God. I told them I'm going. I went. 
The moment I signed and I came into full time, when I read newspaper, I see people working in corporation. In these days, I just saw vanity. All became vain in my heart. My heart was in the work. By God's grace, my cell that was slender, I started putting on little, little weight. I became fresher. The Spirit of God came on. I became happier and all other things. I went to a place, the place I went to, by the riverside, by the side, I was in one room then. I think my wife even met me then. Symmetry at the side. In the night, they bring that body to bury. Right there, I was there. It was a village, everything. I never saw it. That never came to my mind. We go to pit toilet one day. I think my wife fell or myself fell. And we draw water. People defecate inside the water. You draw that water, put a lump, drink it, and all other things like that. I never had this entry. And God kept me. So please, when God gives you a call, answer it. Because the reward is great. I say the reward is great. Christ has gone to establish a kingdom. And many people want to be part of it. But he says anyone that will come after him into the kingdom, let him deny himself. Let him deny himself. Take up the cross and follow him. In Mark chapter 8, verse 34 to 37. Mark chapter 8, from verse 34. We are told then what the scripture says in Mark 8. When God is saying, give, devil will tell you if you give, you have need. You will come to penury, to poverty. Forget about Satan. Give as you should give. Nobody ever gave to God and lack anything. In verse 34, we are told, and when he had called the people unto him, with his disciples also, he said unto them, Whosoever will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. For whosoever will save his life shall lose it. But whosoever shall lose his life for my sake and the gospel, the same shall save it. For what shall it profit a man if he shall gain the whole world and lose his own soul? I ask you the question, what are you living for? Are you living for sand? Sand! All the houses, they are dust. Certificates, PhD, professorial certificates and everything, they are dust. All the currency, hard currency, pound sterling, euro, dollars, everything, naira, local currency, naira, they are all dust. Those they are, they return to the dust. Only two aspects of you, spirit, soul, is going up. Every other thing will be buried. The ordinary thing, whole day with loose hand and secure blessings in heaven, reward in heaven, and the Lord will reward you in Jesus' name. Difficulties, opposition, negative comments, lack of support, we threaten to dissuade us from continuing, from continuing when confronted by any of these, anything or anyone that we contest our law for the Lord, we must resolve to put law for Christ and follow him first. We must be aware and make the personal choice not to exchange following the Savior for anything or because of anyone who sidelined the Lord 
will lose his own soul. I pray you will not lose your soul in Jesus' name. You can read John chapter 21 from verse 19 and see Peter's experience with the Lord. The Lord said, what is that to do you? Follow me. Look away from all others are doing. It's a personal choice. And the Lord wants you to follow him wholly and he shall be well with you. That leads us to point two. The painful cost of following Christ half-heartedly. Half when you follow half-heartedly, you will miss the kingdom. When you follow half-heartedly, you will be confused. The light will not be in you. The, his presence power will not be there. The blessing you need to have will not be there. You will be confused. And the needed things will not be given to you. That is the reason why following Christ half-heartedly has painful consequences. Those who left Egypt, many, many of them, about 30 million who left, only two literally enter into the promised land. Even Moses did not enter into the Canaan land on earth. Only Caleb and Joshua. Because they wholly follow the Lord. In Numbers 32, we read in verse 11. Numbers 32, in verse 11, we are told here in Numbers 32, from verse 11. See what the scripture says here. What happened to those who followed God half-heartedly? What happened to those who followed God? Bread and butter decision. What happened to God who have reverse gear? Or those who have alternative roots? Those whose mind and heart are divided? In verse 11 of Numbers chapter 32. Surely none of the men that came out of Egypt from 20 years old and upwards shall see the land which I swear unto Moses, unto Isaac, and unto Jacob, because they have not wholly followed me. When we have not wholly followed the Lord, blessings elude us. When we have not wholly followed the Lord, fellowship with God eludes us. When we have not wholly followed the Lord, fruitfulness eludes us. When we have not followed, uh, wholly followed the Lord, the light of the gospel, the knowledge of deep things, revelation and other things eludes us. But for those who make up their mind and follow him, his presence and power is guaranteed. God prepared the promised land filled with milk and honey for the descendants of Abraham. For descendants of Abraham. But they were prevented from entering because they did not only follow the Lord. God called Saul, the first king of Israel, but he did not follow the Lord wholeheartedly. And because he didn't follow the Lord wholeheartedly, he missed it. In first Samuel, in chapter 15, in verse 11. First Samuel, chapter 15, we read, in verse 11, when you only follow the Lord, you are careless about your life. You are careful about God's will. You are careful about what God says. You know God will keep your life. I'm not saying you will endanger your life, 
But there are times you take some risk. Yesterday, if I were to look at all I was to do today, I would say it is impossible. I had at least two messages to prepare. The more than that, I went to Ishokbo yesterday. We went around the ground for more than one hour. I came back, just rested for about 15 minutes to 20 minutes, started preparing. I came here, delivered my message, then came here. I had a Zoom meeting that took me from 9 o'clock to around 10.30, almost 11. I started preparing this message. Then after 12, I went to bed to sleep. Around 3 o'clock, I woke up between 3 and 4. I woke up to prepare. Then this morning I'm here. And by the grace of God, by 11 I'm living here. I'm going to Lagos. I have about three meetings to attend today. God who has taken me through this one, I'm already almost finishing two now. I will pass through the whole thing. Because the power of God will keep me. Refresh me and keep me through. And if you are willing, the Lord will keep you true. It shall be well with you. In First Samuel chapter 15, we read in verse 11. First Samuel chapter 15, in verse 11. The scripture says here, in chapter 15, in verse 11. The three meetings I have in the night today, I've delegated one already. The other two, I'll go through. The Zoom meeting, it will be done. In chapter 15, in verse 11, the Bible says here, to you and to me, and all those who will follow the Lord, it says, in verse 11, it repented me, may this not be say about, said about you, that I have set up so, to be king for his turn back from following me. He turned back because of what people said. Because he was afraid of people and has not performed my commandment. And he gripped somewhere and he cried unto the Lord all the night. May your leaders not cry over your life. May they rejoice over your life. May they don't cry over your life, they will rejoice. In verse 22 and 23, we are told here, and Samuel said, Has the Lord as great delight in burnt offering and sacrifice as in obeying the voice of the Lord? Behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hacking than the fat of the ram. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness. It's as iniquity and idolatry. Because thou hast rejected the word of the Lord, he has also rejected thee from following, from being king. May that not be your portion. May that not be your portion. Although Solomon was a wise and privileged king, his wife turned his heart away from following the Lord. As a result, God reigned the kingdom and gave it to his servant. And the Lord stayed up an adversary unto Solomon. This showed that God does not have any favorite and is no respecter of person. He exalts his word above his name. He exalts his word above his name. And Solomon, he missed it because he did not wholly follow the Lord. In 1 Kings chapter 9, 1 Kings chapter 9, we read 1 Kings chapter 9, 
We read from verse 1, 2, 6, and 7. 1 Kings chapter 9, verse 1, 2, 6, and 7. It says here, in the word of God, that cannot fail. In chapter 9, verse 1, it came to pass, when Solomon has finished the building of the house of the Lord, the king's house and all Solomon's desire, which he was pleased to do, that the Lord appeared to Solomon the second time, as he has promised unto him at Gibeon. In verse 6, but if ye shall at all turn from following me, ye and all your children, I will not keep my commandment and my status which I have, have said before you, but go and serve other gods and worship them. They will I cut off Israel and out of all the land which I have given unto them. And this house, which I have hallowed for my name, will I cast out of my sights. And Israel shall be a proverb and a byword among God the people. Did God do that which he said there? He did it. He brought it to pass. Solomon eventually in chapter 11, we see what he did and what God did. In chapter 11, verse 1, 2, 5, 9 to 11. But King Solomon loved many strange women. Together with daughter of Pharaoh, women of the Moabites, Ammonites, Edomites, Edomites, and Hittites, of the nation concerning which the Lord said unto the children of Israel, Ye shall not go to them, neither shall they come unto you. For surely they will turn away your heart after their gods, so will not cleave unto them in love. Solomon cleaved unto them in love. What then was the consequence upon him? Solomon went to serve other gods. He served other gods. In verse 4, it came to pass when Solomon was old that his wife turned away his heart after other gods. And his heart was not perfect with the Lord, his God, as was the heart of David, his father. What then was the consequence of that? We are told in verse 9 to verse 11. It says, and the Lord was angry with Solomon because his heart was torn from the Lord God of Israel. This is the one called Jedidiah, the beloved of the Lord. The Lord eventually changed everything because his heart was torn from the Lord God of Israel, which had appeared unto him twice and had commanded him concerning this thing that he should not go after other gods. But he kept not that which the Lord said, the Lord commanded. Wherefore the Lord said unto Solomon, For as much as he, for as much as this is done of thee, and thou hast not kept my commandment and my status, which I have commanded thee, I will surely rend the kingdom from thee, and will give it to thy servant. God fulfilled it to the letter. God is not a slave or a servant of anybody. He exalts his word above his name. And if we go into anything that is different from his will, he will reward us as we have done. It's the law of sowing and reaping. Those who forsake the way of the Lord God raised up adversary, who now he used to chastise Solomon. And problem came left and right. Before then, David handed over to him a peaceful kingdom. There was rest all over. 
from from uh, down to to to, to better everywhere everywhere there was peace all over but now walking left and right because he did not wholly follow the lord those who forsake the way of the lord by casting off their consecration commitment and all the decisions they made to follow him give room for enemies to pursue them or like the children of israel who were overthrown in the wilderness Unlike God wants us to make up our mind individually to follow him with all our hearts. So our mind, the multitude that followed Christ did not because they were consigned by the word of eternal life, but because they did eat bread. They were filled and many of them went back and Jesus, as the other two were, will he also go back with them? They said, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. May that be your decision in Jesus' name. You can read John chapter 6, verse 2, 15, 24 to 27. Verse 16, verse 66, to verse, to verse 70. Peter said, to whom shall we go? Thou hast the word of eternal life. They followed Jesus through. Others went back. Many people are going back because of hardship. Many are turning back because of the demand and the challenges of life. Unbelievers, they also have the challenges. Many of them are not forsaken their God. They are not forsaken Satan that is doing them evil, causing it. Why will you follow, forsake God who is taking away all this evil from you? May you be totally free and free indeed. That leads us to the last point. The perpetual covenant while following Christ wholeheartedly. Perpetual covenant. The Lord made a perpetual covenant with those who are ready to lay their might, their soul, and everything that is dear to them wholeheartedly on the altar without reservation. Abraham had followed the Lord for 24 good years. Still, the Lord called him. In Genesis chapter 17, verse 1 to verse 4. Genesis 17, from verse 1 to verse 4. The Lord called him, and the Lord told him, Walk thou before me, and be thou perfect. When Abraham was 90 years old and nine, the Lord appeared to Abraham, remember, it was almost the dawn of the coming of Isaac. Your blessing is very near. Don't go back. It was just remaining a year for Isaac to come. And remaining a year for Isaac to come, God told Abraham, don't go back. Walk thou before me and be thou perfect. And Abraham obeyed. Your blessing is very near. Don't lower your consecration. Don't lower your giving. Don't say, I'll be giving. The, I'll be saying, God is going to bless me. There's a period of tests. God will test you and prove you. The blessing may not come where you want it. The blessing will come at the appropriate time. And this may be the time when God will open heaven to bless you. In Exodus chapter 19, in verse 5, Exodus 19, in verse 5, we are told by the word of God. Exodus 19, in verse 5, now the year 4, if you will obey my voice indeed and keep my covenant, 
They shall be a peculiar treasure to me above all the people. For all the earth is mine. It shall be unto me a kingdom of priests and a holy nation. These are the words which thou shalt speak unto the children of Israel. God wants to make you peculiar. God wants to make you the breadwinner to your extended family. He wants to make you the head and not the tail. He wants to make you above only. If only you will believe the Lord, the Lord will do it for you. I say he's going to do it for you. And by his grace, he will bring all to pass in your life in Jesus' name. Those who follow the Lord wholeheartedly for doing this, God promised to multiply Abraham exceedingly and make him a father of many nations. Similarly, God wants to renew his covenant with us, but on the basis that we follow him wholeheartedly. He wants us to bring back our consecration, our commitment, our absolute surrender, and lay all on the altar. God promises to lavish his blessing upon those who are willing to obey his voice indeed and keep his covenant and follow him truly, thoroughly. He says, there shall be a peculiar treasure unto me. Above all, for all the earth is mine. Therefore, a language must be like the language of those servants. I am thine and all that I have. Say that, I am thine and all that I have. That I have, I am thine and all that I have. And by the grace of God, the Lord will make it so in your life in Jesus' name. We must release everything we have because of Christ's sacrifice for us. He gave all at Calvary, just as he gave his precious life for us, we also must give our life substance, time, and talents and vow to follow him wholeheartedly. Christ said, if any man serve him, he, he will follow me. Let him follow me. Where I am, there shall also my servant be. If any man serve me, he will my father honor. God wants to honor you with long life. God wants to honor you with blessing. God wants to honor you with healthy life. God wants to honor you above what you ever think about. And your song will be I never know you will honor me this way. I never know you will honor me in this way, oh. I never know. You will honor me in this way. You will honor me in this way. Thank you, Jesus. Rise up. We never know. You will honor us this way. We never know. You will honor us this way, oh. I never know. You will honor us this way. You will honor us this way. Thank you, Jesus. After the prayer, Naom, all coordinators, group coordinators, wherever you are, you will talk to the people. God wants to remove poverty from every member of this church. As we keep to Ishoko, development, construction, as we keep to DLICC, we are preparing that very place, as we keep to GCK, and we are giving sacrificially, selflessly, God will open heaven, and heaven will come upon you. Then thereafter, your song will be, I never know, you will honor me this way, I never know. You will honor me in this way. I never know. You will honor me this way. Honor me this way.
Jesus.